Hello there and welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a good Friday, whatever you are doing today, whatever you're doing, if you're working or if you are indeed still at home like the majority of us and trying to find something to do with your time. There's there's, there's not, not a great deal of news to really update on. Um, it's just going to be a video of me speaking about a couple of things like um, the, you know, the UFC being back, um, the Bundesliga, you know, that's obviously coming back this weekend as well, but just some other general things as well. Um, and hopefully it's a it's a nice video just to sort of end off the week because I don't record videos during the weekend anymore because there's no Premier League and actually the Bayer Leverkusen game because that is the team I'm following in the Bundesliga while that makes it its return their game isn't actually until Monday night so got plenty of time to think about whatever we want to do but I'll still be watching the other Bundesliga games as well and we'll obviously be waiting to see how successful it is. In returning to some form of normality as well. Now, I made a video yesterday, um, a short video about Koulibaly being linked to Liverpool, and someone got upset about the fact that I'd raised that um, that Koulibaly could potentially leave Napoli. All I said was that we were linked. Never said that we'd open talks or anything like that. Listen, I don't do transfer rumors like some other channels do. I, I, if something looks quite credible. I will comment on it, but I would never turn around and say that Liverpool are in for a player if I don't think that we are. You know, and I've always said, you know, like 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 when we had Mbappe 2020 and that hashtag was trending everywhere, never made a video on it because it's not going to happen. As much as people would want it to happen, Mbappe is not coming to Liverpool. He's too expensive. It, it's just not going to happen. Now, I don't know what the buyout clause and all that lot is of Koulibaly. I don't know how long his contract is at Napoli. Literally was just a headline flashed up on my phone saying Koulibaly linked to Liverpool um, and all this sort of, oh, that we were front runners to sign uh, Koulibaly if he leaves Napoli. Just one of those things. I certainly am never going to... I'm not a big enough channel to create transfer buzz. I'm really not. I comment on things that I see. I don't comment on things that I think have absolutely no fact, um, no base of fact, like the Mbappe one, um, as, I, as I said before. So please don't, if you are an opposition fan or if you are an, uh, in another league, whatever club you support, if someone is linked to Liverpool and I make a video on it, don't get upset. I'm not, do, I, that's just not one of those things that you should get upset about. It really isn't. It's not that deep, honestly. It really, you think as Liverpool fans, we haven't, you know, we we've had we've had our best players in history in some of our recent history go like when Torres went to Chelsea that almost tore my heart out. Um, Suarez when he you know did that bite on Chiellini and then he moved to Barcelona that was unreal, absolutely unreal. We we know, we've had our uh, Gerard um, basically leaving Liverpool because of Brendan Rodgers, like ah uh, you think that we don't know what it's like to have players linked to other clubs and then them actually go. We do. We know better than most. We, we used to get linked to all these big players and that, and it never came off. We would always get, like, the B-Tech, C-Tech version of what we were linked to, you know. So don't get upset. It's, 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 it's okay. Don't worry about it. Now, the UFC held another event on Wednesday night, um, and it was a good event. Really, really good event. So far, that one hasn't... I think the only person that... Um, there was one fighter that got pulled and it wasn't for the coronavirus or COVID-19. It wasn't related to that. It was something else um, pulled out of his fight. There was only one fight that was pulled. The rest of the fights all took place just as normal. Um, seemed like a successful evening of fights. Nothing has come out of it. Nothing has also, apart from the one um, Jacare Souza, apart from him on last Saturday, him coming out um, and testing positive for it and his, and his team as well, Nobody else over two events yet um, have tested positive or it, or it has been released of that. Something else could still come out. So at one, one person out of two events, it looks like a massive win for the UFC. And it could also then mean, you know, are like football organizations getting in touch with like Sir Dana White, uh, the UFC president and people that are involved there of how they've actually gone about doing it. Because if you think all these talks about 
in the Premier League where you won't be able to do stat, you won't be able to do tackles, um, free kick walls are apparently you know you're gonna be two meters apart. I, I think that's a joke, but I, I don't. I, I hope it's a joke anyway because what's the point in having a free kick wall if you got to stand two meters apart? <laughs> you know, um, it'd be a field day for Trent anyway. Um, but are they in communication with someone like the UFC because? As I say, that's the tangent I was going on. When you see about, like, you know, maybe no tackles and stuff like that happening, but then you've got the UFC fighters who are literally grappling, you know, they're punching each other in the face, but they're taking people down as well, submissions and stuff like that. That is as close quarters as you could get to another human being that doesn't live with you. So I know it's less people. You know, you've got 22 players on a pitch, coaching staff and all that lot. It's a lot different to the individual sport that UFC is, but there will be relatable elements, I feel, that they could possibly learn from what they've done. They were the first sport back. They said they wanted to be the first sport back, and they did it. So far, they've had two successful events with only one positive test that has been released that we know of. It, you know, And they've got another event on Saturday night as well. They've done three, they're going to do three events this week. It's unreal what they've made, what they've managed to do. They stuck to their guns and they said they were going to do it. They've done it. Can other leagues and such like that, like you know, other professional sports, you know, not even just football, um, NFL, baseball, uh, basketball, anything like that, can they learn from it and can they get themselves back? We don't know yet, but obviously the only thing that people are missing is the fans and such like that, which seems to be a griping concern with Premier League fans. If you, you know, people are now starting to move towards if you can't have the fans at the game you shouldn't be finishing the season and it's like okay so so we've moved from health and safety concerns which is still my main concern health and safety of all the players and the people that are involved with 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 a match day um going ahead in terms of just the, you know the clubs the you know the football staff whoever else is involved never mind the fans obviously not being there but everyone that's involved the health and safety aspect of it that is the most paramount thing, in my mind, anyway. A lot of people obviously moved from that and they went on to the whole the Null and Void Brigade, as they're now called and have been coined, uh, because they wanted the season Null and Voided. They wanted it just, you know, scratched from the records. You know, there's no title, there's no relegations. It's as if this season didn't happen. Now, the FA and the Premier League have said that's not happening. It will not be Null and Voided. That is not an option. Somehow, we will be going ahead. Whether it's you know whether they're able to finish the season in like actual playing football, the options that they talked about was having shorter halves and things like that as well. Um, five substitutes has been confirmed as a thing that can can happen in games now as well. Obviously to alleviate some of the fitness issues that will probably prop up, uh, crop up I should say when football does come back if it comes back I should say. Um, now they've obviously moved over from that and then when no and Boyd was a thing you know that when that got taken off the table everybody then started moving towards well you can't do points per game um you got to take relegations off the table everyone is now moving further and further away from the actual concerns now they're going towards well the fans aren't at the game and football is nothing without fans that's not true the fans are massive obviously but the main thing that matters for the Premier League and the FA and every, you know, every other football organization around the world, at, like that have a top level, like Premier League, La Liga, League on Bundesliga, any of Syria, everyone like that that has a top league. What do you think is their main concern? It's the almighty dollar. That is it. For us, the fans make the game. The fans spend the money. The fans, you know, bring the atmosphere that it takes place at games. They, the fans can turn a game. The fans can also take a game away from a team as well, depending on which way it swings. For the Premier League and organisations, the only thing that matters is money. That is it. That is the only thing that they're concerned about. That is why you've probably seen... Well, that's why we've seen the Bundesliga is coming back first out of every other league. The Premier League wants to follow suit and they want to get back in action by by around the 15th of June, which I still think it's months too early, in my opinion. And we're top of the table by 25 points. And my main concern is that everything is safe. Everything is safe and ready to go. That there will be no issues or minor, minor issues. This just seems far too soon. And it just seems like the Premier League are going to just want to piggyback 
the Bundesliga because they're like, oh, German football's come back. Well, we've got to come back. We need to get back on TV. We've got Sky contracts and BT contracts and stuff like that that we need to we need to get them. We need to be getting our money. What, what's going to happen for us? We need to be getting our money in. That's all they care about. That is all they care about. And it's sad in a way. It really is sad in a way. Like, I genuinely mean that. It's just that is that is their concern. My concern and most fans, I would say, I would say majority of fans is that everything is safe to do so. There are still some people that are calling for it to be null and voided, but the intelligent football fan would say there's a very real reality that football safely doesn't come back at all this year. They may try and bring it back in June, middle of June. They might try and bring it back. I think when they bring it back, someone tests positive, one person tests positive or has symptoms of the coronavirus, what needs to happen? That person and every single member of that squad, coaching staff, team, everything, two weeks isolation. So then what happens? Okay, the team that they played, that's 22 players, two sets of coaching staff, two sets of full teams, everything, both two weeks isolation minimum. So then what happens if that happens multiple times over a season? The season will never end. They might try and bring it back. And I, 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 gar I almost guarantee that they will not be able to prevent someone testing positive and that they will have to have teams isolated. You might as... For me, the benchmark would have been... The Bundesliga might do well, that's fine. But their measures as a country have been very different to the UK's and they have been very, very efficient at what they do there's the old phrase of German efficiency they have been very efficient in what they do they've been better than the UK in terms of government response to this pandemic we have just basically waited and looked around at what everyone else is doing and just gone right Germany are doing well let's not copy them that's been the attitude that it comes across as to me anyway I don't think the Premier League are going to be properly prepared for games coming back in June. It's why I've always said you'd be looking at October, November, maximum like as a minimum, like like as your earliest start date. And then when they came out with June, I was genuinely shocked. I was genuinely surprised. And I genuinely think it's just money driven and that's not gonna be brand new brand new information to anyone, but also because the Bundesliga's come back as well. The Bundesliga coming back has probably accelerated the Premier League's thought process and I think La Liga as well. In the fact that, like, right, we've got to get our teams back on TV. That's what it's all about. They can talk sport and merit all they want. They can talk about, like, the essence of the game and the merits of the game and the sportsmanship and all that lot. It comes down to money. That is what it's all about. And you know what the sad thing, you know what the sad thing is as well? Once football does come back, like, if it does come back, Bundesliga is probably going to have the highest views worldwide than it's ever had in history when it comes back this weekend. And if the Premier League comes back and La Liga comes back as well, viewing figures will be high. I am no I am no better than anyone else. I will be watching every single game that I am available to watch. And we're all in our houses. What are, what we're all sports fans. We are craving sport. What are we gonna watch? We all will. I will. And I'll be watching the Bundesliga this weekend as well. So listen, it's been a bit of a rant. It's not an, it's not a planned video. It, I, I don't I don't script my videos, so I just go off what I feel and think off the top of this thing, just whenever, it, and I just let it fly, you know. And um, it's just one of those things. I hope that every single one of you has a great weekend. I hope you all have a good weekend. It's not a clear and positive time right now, but I hope that you're able to take care of yourselves. I hope you're able to find some some sort of happiness throughout the day, some sort of um, something to do, something to keep you occupied, and something to maybe build towards. I've just completed an online content course, which was, it was all right at first and it got very boring, very quick, but we've got a certificate. It's all right. I'm going to be doing a couple of online courses just to, just to get them in the bag, really, just to keep myself occupied. I'm going to be writing music and stuff like that. I know I don't post them on YouTube and stuff, but, um, I'm going to be writing music. So like, I hope that you're able to keep occupied and just keep yourselves going as well. Take care of yourselves. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. But once again, thank you.
genuinely thank you for anyone that watches these videos. Take care of yourselves, be safe, be well, and I'll catch you later.